y'all? This your boy G, the General, coming from you from the General's Report. Um, just wanted to let you guys take a look at this interview we did yesterday. And um, thankful for Coach J, Coach Stevie J from Hyde. Um, let's try that. Again. What's up, y'all? This your boy G, the General, coming to you from the General's Report. Um, we're gonna get into this interview I got yesterday with the Hyde Leadership High School coach, boys coach, uh, Coach Stevie Jefferson. Um, we were thankful that he would let us into his tryouts and, and give us some of his time to let us know a little bit about himself, his program, and what they look forward to going forward in the future with, with his program. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and like, once again, I, we want to thank Coach Jay for giving us some time. And we're looking to talk to more high school coaches, players, as well as colleges and stuff like that. So if you're interested, please send me an email or a text. My email is defam, D. A F A M one two zero zero two at yahoo dot com. Thanks again and I hope you enjoy the interview. What's up y'all? This your man Gita General. We're here at Fairhaven Middle School. We're here with Coach J, um, Coach What's Stevie up? Jefferson from Hyde. Um we just wanna you know come and follow the, the Hyde boys throughout the season. Um we was here, we seen you had about five thousand kids in here trying to try out for your team, which is a good thing. It is a good thing. Because you got kids wanting to be a part of your program, but what do you think are some of the things that you can help with some of the kids in the future that's looking to try out for high school basketball teams, including your own program? I think the city has to take a uh, the city of New Haven has to take a better initiative, Gary, of doing a lot a lot more um, enrichment programs such as uh, camp initiatives and stuff like that. Because basically, a lot of kids who are coming from the seventh and eighth grade uh, that group they have a very low skill set. And so what you find with a lot of AAU programs, not only in New Haven, but really in the surrounding area regionally, is that these guys simply rely on the kids who have God-given talent. But how about the kids who have very low skill sets? They can't compete. So the, most, the guys who are the most attractive early on are actually the kids with the talent. But you know, at high, we don't have that advantage because we're on a lottery system. So we may not inherit that kid with that particular skill set. So we have to deal with whatever we inherit, you see? And so skill development is very important for us. So, I mean, I think that's a big component that's lost from a lot of the AAU coaches and a lot of the middle school coaches because everybody wants to quote unquote win. But winning at any cost is really placed to a disadvantage of a youth who's really trying to learn, love, and respect the game. And, and I say that a lot to other people that, you know, that's one thing that I try to keep separate from our program with whether I'm doing boys or girls is trying to develop kids. You know, a right. lot of people want to, you said they want to win, they want to do this. I got the nationals, I got the states and all of that. But to me, I think a lot of kids, they get uh, hurt because they hit their ceiling at that seventh and eighth grade. That's right. Everybody's telling them how great they are, how good they are. So then, like even tonight, there's some kids you see, they don't play no defense, they don't run back. Right. So they'll get 15 and 20, but your man or, you know, the team, you're giving up 30 points, whether it's backdoor layups or your man scoring. So, I agree. So my, my thing is, too, is like, how, how do you, being that you said you have, you're at a disadvantage from some of the bigger schools in the city or around the area, how do you sell your program to kids and be able to get them to buy into the high school other than just your basketball program? Well, we try to keep it very simple. Number one, um, we try to let the kids know, the young student athletes that we inherit, that if you guys decide to come to high, that you are basically inheriting a a basketball program. We're like, we're gonna be family for life. So you're just not gonna do four and then take off and we're all just gonna forget about you. You see, so you so the four that you invest in high, that's forever. Because I mean, unless you want to pretend that you didn't attend our school. You see what I mean? But and I seen that here, you, you had a couple of years. You see what I mean? Guys, yeah, because all of my guys, they love coming back. We had a uh, a midday madness the other day. We had guys playing as far back as 2000. One one guy from '98 couldn't make it. He had to do a uh, he had to do a party, you know. But that goes because we do we treat our guys very well when they're here. The major onus with us is everything begins and ends in the classroom. So if our kids are not good enough, quote unquote, to be Division One or Division Two players or even Division Three players, at least we know they have the aptitude to move on and go to college. So like I've been telling you for time immemorial, Gary, right now, at present, at present count, we have 23 college graduates. So 
we've been to a state championship game five times. We've been fortunate enough to win twice, right? So we've hung two banners, but we had the opportunity to compete to play at the highest level, you see? But I will surrender all of that for my 23 college graduates because that rings more of a bell. That's more of a resounding bell than anything else that we've done here or anything we've accomplished here at the high program. And so if I have to talk to a parent or a parent wants to inquire, this is what I talk about. I don't talk about basketball. Basketball, in fact, may be the very last piece that I get to. You see what I mean? You know, because this is about what do you want from us or what do you want us to do as a staff and a school for your child after they have invested four years with us. And, and, and if, you, if you're not willing to answer that bell, answer that call, or respond accordingly, then no parent should send their kid to me. You see what I mean? So what, what do you consider a successful year for your, for your uh, teams and stuff? Well, without winning the championship. How can you have a successful year without winning the championship? Well, that's a great question, Gary, because with us, it's very simple. Every year, irregardless of what our personnel looks like, irregardless, our goal and our mindset as a program is final four or bust. So we don't believe in mediocrity. So anything mediocre, we're not doing it. Like bare minimum, we won three Shoreline Conference championships. But that's not even a goal. But that's a goal to many of the schools in our conference to win the conference championship because they know how difficult it is to get to win in the states. But the conference championship just gives us a pretty good read or barometer of how we can potentially be in the state playoffs. So usually when we go to our conference championship or we compete in the conference championships, what happens is we tend to at least move on to the final fours because we know we're clicking on all cylinders, our guys are mentally prepared, we're right, we're prepared to execute, we're good like that. But that's not our main frame. Our main frame is not the show line conference championship. Our goal is to get to the final four. So once again, we don't deal with mediocrity. So if our guys don't win, the conference championship, although we don't put an onus on that, or get to the final fours, we don't even have a banquet. What do we celebrate? Yeah. What, you scoring? Your block shots? No, it wasn't enough. So we don't want to celebrate that because the minute you celebrate it, you're celebrating a new standard. That is not the standard of the program. And we've been extremely fortunate to have great administrative leaders like uh, Mr. John Russell just recently retired, but now we have um, our new principal and she's on board with us, but Mr. Russell was totally on board with me. You know, I can speak, I can speak about Mr. Russell because we've dealt with each other for 12 years and Dr. Parrish, she's new. But, and I'm not saying she's not gonna be on board with me in the end in regards to that philosophy, but Mr. Russell's like, Coach Jay, I'm with you all day long. If they're not going to produce on the floor, what are we celebrating? And he applauded me for that. I mean, why are we wasting the school's money? I'm not doing it. You know, the parents may want that, but what parent doesn't want her child to play with the four best players? You know what I mean? So we're not about that. You know, we just want to try to do the best that we can do. So what? What? maybe you can explain, you know, for me, uh, for other people on just the class level, because I know through some other schools and programs they sell, they, they try to belittle high success or winning and stuff like that. Like how, how, do you, how can you explain that to a parent who sometimes everybody looks at the big lights, which could be class double L or the L, um, in comparison to what you, what you have accomplished in your years at high, and you know just where some of your kids still got, like you said, you have 23 college graduates. Because I don't think that some of the parents understand that it doesn't matter what level you're playing at, your kid can still go to college and get the same type of recognition as a higher level class L or double L school. Oh yeah, or play it. Basically, um, I, I think once again, Gary, you're pretty hot tonight. It's another good question because my response to that is simply this. Look, it doesn't matter where you send your child. If your kid can compete, your kid's gonna compete at any level. One thing about my staff and I, we never say anything negative about another school. I am not in control of someone else from another program saying something positive or negative about the high program. All I know is this, I'm in control of my own faculties. So I'm not gonna say anything wrong about any school in our area. Uh, Hill House, Wilbur Cross, uh, James Hill House, Wilbur Cross, or Career High School. I will never say anything negative about their schools. What I would say to a parent if an inquiry is made, is simply this. 
those are very good schools, or that is a very good school, ma'am, and they have a very rich basketball tradition. I can't do nothing about that, but this is what we're doing at high. And I move forward, and I begin to pinpoint some of the things that we've done, our basketball success, but more importantly, our academic success with a lot of our players after leaving high. Remember, there are 179 schools in the state. We're probably the second or third smallest school in the state. You remember as well as I do, in 2010, in 2010, we were rated number three in the entire state. Irregardless of class, we're talking straight across the board, yeah, basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. So, And there was some there was some question on where you should have been and why you were where you were because of possibly the history of the school's teams that were heavy. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and But the other thing was this. I'm how, saying like something like that. How, how does that, how do you get your guys that could possibly, that team could have possibly been better than the number one and number two team that were ranked? How do you keep your guys focused and not being, you know, uh, getting messed up mentally behind stuff like that with the polls and all that? Well, stuff. I just I tell them, look, you know, papers, you read papers for your enjoyment. You don't don't read them and believe them because, you know, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. And so, if you're reading it and you're believing it, and you fall flat on your face, are you gonna believe what you read then? I mean, so take it with a grain of salt, but stay focused at the task at hand. This is why. We believe in small victories, not giant victories. We don't have to take giant leaps. You know, during during the school year, we try to look at, you know, we try to measure our growth every four games. So in our program, uh, we have uh, basically, we celebrate many victories. Not many, but many victories. So every four games, we know our percentile. You see, so it's just small victories. So you can go 0 and 8 and then run off your next 12. You see what I mean? So that's that's what it's really about. You know, if you really want to know what type of what type of person I am, you can just ask Coach Kermit Carolina, the principal now at our former coach Carolina, principal at Hills, James Hills High School. Once upon a time, you, you know, you're basketball funded. You remember Marinopolis Prep? Back in the day, now these guys were just whooping everybody. I think they were class S champions. It, but they were solid, top ten perennial two years in a row. So I wanted to know how good Hyde is gonna be. So when I inherited Hyde, I said, let me find Marinopolis Prep. So we go up and play. The first time we played them, they beat us by 50. I'm going, wow, no problem. Get home, study the film, we go back up, play them again. The next time, they beat us by 30. I'm excited. So I call Kern, say, yo, Kern, Kern, listen, uh, what's the, did you win? I said, nah, we lost, but we only lost by 30. He's cracking up on the phone. He goes, so what's the point? I said, you missed the point. The point is, we just got 20 points better in less than 10 days. That's what I believe in, continuous growth. And that's who I am. So I'm not gonna run from you, I'll run to you. We don't hide from nobody. Everybody in the state has my number, Gary. They're just smart enough not to call me because they know when they play against high, we're gonna have, you know, we're gonna play some very good defense and we're gonna make a game of it. Either you're gonna beat us by 50 or we're gonna beat you by five. And, you know, as, as I said, we talked to a lot of people and, you know, even coming in here today, you know, different parents outside and stuff like that. There's a lot of people who respect, as, as well as myself, respect your coaching style and how you do, you know, and, and uh, you know, you can be kind of a, a, of course, my mentor, Mr. Bentley, a, uh, a smaller version of Mr. Bentley I'll because of that. your, I'm not saying that just in your body, right, but, right, you right, know right, what I mean, just in your style and your philosophy, but, you know, even with the kids, like some people don't understand my philosophy and style of, if you're watching the game, because we're so into the game and our energy is to, you know, to keep our kids playing and stuff. But, you know, the relationships is the biggest part, I feel, you know, and that's what I tell people in my organization, you know, as well as it seems like you have the same philosophy is, you know, right. you want to be able to create that family. You know right. what I'm saying? So either way, whether you make it to be the W, I mean, the NBA or the WNBA for me with girls, you know what I mean? We still care about you as a person and a kid, you know. Right. And I think for some people, you know, this is statewide or nationally, a lot of these guys are in it for their own self. You know what I mean? Right, right. Stuff for the for their you know, yeah, self gratification. Right. Pockets was getting loose over there, Coach Jeff. I'm shaking them. I'm shaking them down a little bit. I want to thank everybody who's watching the show with Coach Jefferson, Coach Stevie J of the Hyde Wolves um, in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, this episode is brought to you by No Filters Water. Whenever you feel like saying whatever you want to say, don't forget to look up No Filter Water. 
What's up, y'all? We back here. My man, Coach Jay. Uh, for me, it's Coach Jay, but Coach Steve Jefferson, one of the better coaches in uh, in the state, not just the area. Um, Coach, I just a couple of more questions that I have to ask you, um, especially one main one. You know, being that there's a lot of hype in New Haven with right. Hill House first cross or Hill House first um, career. Um, what, what, how can we haven't heard any Hill House versus Hyde or Cross versus Hyde or Career versus Hyde? Is it, is it these guys are ducking you or you guys are the little brother? We don't want to beat you up or you know what, what do you what do you get out of that? Because I hear all kind of things and reasons, so I'm 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 maybe questioning you on are you the one running from these games or what, what do you think is going on? Well, I tell you, I've, I've never ran from anyone, and I I, I don't I don't run. I, I won't run from you. I'll run to you. And I think most of these guys, they know that right here in our immediate area. The guys at Hill House. Uh, and let me Coach, just be clear. Right. Coach Jay is fully in circle with Coach Kelly, Coach yes. uh, Sutton, and, and, uh, and, Coach Wall, and, and Coach Wall. So right. I know it's not a personal thing no, no, guys no, no. and stuff right. like that. But just, you know, what, what do you think it is, honestly? Because I think a lot of people in the city, they want to see it on the football side and definitely on the basketball well, side. Well, what, what's amazing to me is... Um, a little more than 12 years ago, we all used to play in this, uh, the New Haven Classic at the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And so you had Hill House playing against Willow Cross and you had High playing against Career. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time, we hadn't been successful against Career. But then as the years progressed, we got a lot better mm -hmm. and we progressed as well. So in 2003, I hate to date myself, but back in 2003, we beat. Uh, Career High School, I think in the second round playoff game, we bumped them out. And state playoff. The state playoff game. Now, believe it or not, if you check back on your history the CIEC, during the 2003 season, when we became the eventual champions, uh, Korea and about three or four, three or four other schools weren't even supposed to play in the Class S division. Mm -hmm. Remember, there was really no organization in the CIEC. So we had a lot of the large schools playing down for a crown. Mm -hmm. So since we beat the high school used to be in the M yeah, right. at one point or yeah, so Right. Like and so these guys, Korea actually played down for a crown because they were legitimately an L double L school mm -hmm. based because on the population. population, right? Mm -hmm. So M at, at best, right? Mm -hmm. So or M at the minimum, right? Mm -hmm. So these guys played down for a crown. We smacked them two thousand three. Ten years later, this is 2013, if I got my math right, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't played them in ten years. So I asked Joe Cans, Joe Canzanella, the, the uh, New Haven athletic, athletic director, I said, well, Joe, what's happening with this? Because I remember playing these guys year in, year out at the Coliseum. How in the world have they been given a pass not to play us now? You see? So getting back to 2003, now you move on, we're playing against East Catholic. We're playing against Weston, the same two schools that Hill House beat on the way to their double L championships. How did we play them? We played them once again because they actually played down for crown. So getting back to your question earlier, like what is it? You know, do the big schools are they afraid of you? Are you ducking the big schools? No, I'm not doing anything. We've already played against them when the CIAC was just straight haywire for one year. And we stepped into the challenge. We answered the challenge and we handled the task. And in the end, at the end of the day, we were clearly the state champions. You see what I mean? So if you were to, if we were to go to, to career, let's just say career, right? Because I, I think that it's Hill House, Cross, then career, then high, right? Okay. Maybe, possibly, that's just my opinion. Do you think that if you that's were sitting fair. down- That's fair, we haven't done nothing in the last few years anyway. Okay. So, that's so if you think you were sitting down with Coach Kelly, at wherever, eating some wings. Do you think you can get him to say, yeah, I'll go down town with you and get the AD to set up the game? Do you think those guys are willing to say, yeah, we'll do it? Well, if you're, if you're talking about Coach Kelly, I'll tell you, no, he's, he's not gonna do it. I already asked him. We all had to go downtown to, uh, so. to, to help design new uniforms for this upcoming year. The Board of Bad Boys new uniforms. I gave okay. him five years to do this. So Coach Kelly happened to be on his way out of the building. I'm on my way in. I say, hey, coach, listen, I got a great idea. Why are you coming from me? He said, well, I just ordered some uniforms. I said, well, look, I got a great idea. I said, why don't you take your new uniforms and we'll take our new uniforms and let's play a game. <laughs> and he told me, he said something like, uh, he said something like, uh, 
Coach, I don't know if I'm qualified to play. I looked over at Coach Jerry and I said, well, does that mean no? Qualified to play. He said, I, he said, I don't think, he's speaking from himself, he said, I don't think we're quali qualified to play you. Team-wise. Team-wise. Yeah. He said, I'm, or I'm not qualified to play you or we're not qualified to play you. Is that a nice way of saying that we don't want to do it to you? I think that's a nice way of saying I don't want to take that chance of taking the L. Yeah. That, that's what I do. Because it, it could be almost in, again, let's look at your history of what you've done and your success and just talking to other college coaches and parents about what you do and how you coach and stuff like that. Do you think it's, it's more like a Butler beating North Carolina? Because North Carolina would have everything to lose rather than Butler. Like Butler could it, lose it can to be, North Carolina. I'm sure it, it could be. Because Butler went to the championship, right, the national twice, championship. Twice, exactly. Yeah, but I, they were still looked at as below North Carolina or a Duke or a program. Because like they're, they're, they're basically regarded as a mid-major. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, suffice to say, we may, we, we may give off that type of perception here in the city. Mm -hmm. We may. But I know in 2010, and I don't like to live on the past, but we were in that no team that you had that with number three was really, really good. That was a really, really yeah. solid team. You had four Division One players, you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's rare to, to get that lucky, you see what I mean? But at the end of the day, if that's how if that's how we're perceived as a team and as a program around the city by various people, I have no control over that. I'm just happy that people, you know, look at us and run us a little bit of respect, you know. I think we've really done a pretty good job because once upon a time, you know, if you if you walk into a dark room, if you step into your bathroom and you didn't turn on the light, that's what Hyde was at 19 years ago, you know. But you turn on the lights now, a bunch of plaques and a lot of accolades on the wall. We have a bunch of All-Staters, 23 college graduates. I mean, we've done well for ourselves, you, you see what I mean? And, you know, people even actually say, well, Coach, how many victories do you have? i got to be honest with you, I have no idea. I have no idea, so I gotta get somebody on to call the living register. Maybe they can find out. But once again, it's no big deal with me. It's no big deal. At the end of the day, this is really about our kids. And if the kids succeed, then we succeed and we didn't waste our time. A couple but maybe two more questions. Take your time. If, let's just say hypothetically, if the job opened up at a major school of a Hill House or a cross, what would be some of your thoughts on, on that? Like, what would you think about taking over such a big program with that history rather than a hide where it's not as much pressure probably coming from the city or whoever as far as winning and, and stuff like that? Well, once again, it's a great question, Gary, but everything is based upon perception. You see, now, high may be frowned upon as being a uh, non-popular school or uh, not a school that actually provides the big stage with the big lights. But remember, once upon a time, we were absolutely nothing. So now, if I'm able to walk away from Hyde, how many coaches would actually love to take Hyde over? Hyde is a dream job for most coaches in the state. We've made it then. We've made Hyde an attractive commodity. You see what I mean? Some people inherit schools that have great legacies and they help to maintain of the legacy and keep it somewhat attractive. But if they feel pressured to win, that's on them. I don't feel pressured to win at all. I think it's incumbent upon us to put the best possible product out on the floor and you know let the chips fall where they may. But at the end of the day, not only do you want to win in the classroom, you also want to win on the basketball court because this is why we're actually in the business. You see what I mean? So the way I look at it is, um, it all boils down to perception. Like, if the Hill House job or the Wilbur Cross job, if it opened, would I consider it? I might. I might consider it. But then again, I, I may not. Because just because I'm there doesn't mean a bunch of kids are going to come follow me, you see? Because what if most of the kids in the city, what if the perception is that school has favoritism for guys who are already in the program? You know, they don't even, they don't even really have fair to tryouts. I, I would have to inherit that. Because yeah, yeah. that you is part of the word I hear. It with right. Some people, they have the trials because they have to. Right. Not to really open the door for kids to come actually make the team. Right. So now, if you don't if you don't know my pedigree as a coach, you think that I'm really buying into that type of philosophy. I just inherited the school, but you believe that I think like the other guys. And I don't. I really don't. So I'm fair as fair as going to get. But once again, that's just not a controllable for me. 
I, I can't determine how I'm perceived or how another school is perceived. I mean, do you look at Hill House across being a big school? I may ask, why? Somebody said, do you, do you not look at Hyde as being a big school? Some people may say, why? Why not? Because I think you guys could be in the same boat as Trinity Catholic. Because right. I remember being out of Bridgeport that Trinity Catholic was coming into the city whooping on the Bridgeport Harden, Central, Bassett, and those kids were pretty good out of the city. But you had a smaller school, just like yourself, right. that was coming in, and they were spanking all the division, you know, the high level class, well, the divisions now. Right, right. Where they used to be class and stuff like right. that. But, I mean, what are they doing? They, they were divisions then, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I feel like you, and I think you did the same, you know, with, right. with your success. When I think I first met you, and you were playing in Bridgeport at, oh no, at Fairfield. I forgot what team you had then. Who was on that team? You lost or you won in the uh, states? Was it? A, you had to be the states. Oh, down at Fairfield, uh, Fairfield Low, well, well, Fairfield yeah, Ward. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we we played. That, was that your oh, two? What team was that? Two thousand three. That's the yeah. team that With the went on the championship. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. I that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's just go on the record here, man. Okay. If you could pick one New Haven team to create that rivalry with, rivalry with, who would it be? Clearly, it's it's going to be Korea because that's who we initially begin our ri rivalry with, rivalry with. But you know, they decided to cease and desist. But that's on them. You know, Coach Kelly understands. I understand that all of us are competitive, Gary. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, look, we just I just want to play a game. And it's the not kids like, want to play. And the kids want to play. So at the end of the day, I'm not looking for a fight. You know, yeah. if I have to fight you and bother you and you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, just. Do you I'm think that would help you with recruitment, though? Do you, think, Say it again? do you think beating them would help you with recruitment, or do you think it, it'll all still be the same? I think it'll remain the same. I think uh, Hyde is attractive to some parents, just like Hill House and or Korea is attractive to parents in Cross. They attract, they attract certain parents, but I just think it has nothing to do with any type of recruitment, I mean, we can't recruit anyway. Yeah, exactly. You see what I mean? I'll, so, I'll, I'll wait for you right, to say that. Right. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> question. So we, you know, we can't recruit anyway, but like I try to tell our guys when we're playing, in particular when we're fortunate enough to play in big games or highly profile games, that it's important for us to do well because there are a bunch of young kids, just like this cool kid, your cameraman. You know, these super guys, producer are, request. super producer, yeah. You know, <laughs> these, these guys are in the they're in the gym and they're watching. And so they're, they're nothing but kids. So that not only they're watching, they're dreaming, they're fantasizing like, wow, I love to play in the type of, this type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, what puts the cherry on the top. Because you used to have that with uh, Cromwell. Yes. Well, I remember seeing you play Cromwell a couple times. In, in the field house. house. Yeah, so, you know, when, when, you know, the caveat is not only to participate in a game that's highly profiled like that, it's a big, big stage type of um, situation, the caveat is actually to win that game. You win, a bunch of little kids are walking home telling their parents, Mommy, I'm thinking I really like to go to that high school. I like the coach. He's funny. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets after his guys. Mm -hmm. He's cool with them. He daps them up. Whatever. Well, that's what you I was know? saying with as far as over there with Bentley is and you is like a lot of guys might see you yelling and screaming on the sideline, but they don't see the relationships that you have with those kids after the group, after the game or during practice or after the practice, you know. Right. And I always feel like that too. You got to have that balance with the kid. That's the right. only way they're really going to. You know, open up for you to be able to talk to them and help discipline them and stuff like that. So you know, I appreciate it, man, Coach Jay. Thank you. You know, um, you know, all the time, man, all the time. Uh, let me see. I guess one, one. Well, he's gonna run us out of here with that, uh, that machine. Yeah, with the Zamboni, I guess, with an ice machine on the on the floor. But uh, I, I guess one question I have to ask is, so as we go on through the season, is. Where do you see your guys? Because as a kid, of course, I always do it. I don't know as, as you as a coach. But when you look at your 2013-14 schedule, where do you see you guys at going into uh, the end of February? Well, I, I basically got, I charge my guys with, with a new task. I charge them to compete to win 18 games. I charge them with that task. Now, whether or not they step up, and, and handle that task, it's going to be totally up to them and us as a coaching staff. But that's where I want to be. That's the script. That, that's the expectation. But if we don't get there, if we're anywhere between 12 and 15, that's pretty good going into the state playoffs because it affords us a pretty decent seed. And once you get to the quarterfinals, anything can happen. If you get to the quarterfinals and win, you may get the best possible matchup in the fours. Next you know, you get another 
great opportunity to bring home another state championship for your city, for your town, for your school, and actually for yourself. You know, and, and so hopefully things can work out. But that's the goal going into this year. That's where I see us, like, really, um, I'm really not overly concerned about other teams. I'm more concerned with my team maintaining the will to compete. Because if we maintain a will to compete, the only ones who can actually beat us are ourselves. And so we're real big on that. So I think if we can master that type of mindset, we're going to be fine moving forward for the 13 points in the season. All right, well, we're going to come back, hopefully, again, and check my man, Coach Jay, out and his high wolves at uh, some of your games. You can come check him out at Fairhaven Middle School. Hopefully, we'll be back to come check out Coach Jay and his high wolves at Fairhaven Middle School. Uh, he's going to hit us with a schedule, and um, we'll be in some of the practices as well as the games. Again, I appreciate it for watching the General's Report. I'm going to get Coach Jay in the studio at the school so we can talk more about him. Because, uh, obviously, the custodians want us out of here. So, uh, thanks again, and I appreciate Thank you for you checking in. I appreciate it. My man. Thank you, guys. The fam.